might not have a catchphrase like her dad or her brother, but this smart Simpson sure has her moments. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Lisa Simpson storylines. Oh no. For this list, we're looking at storylines from The Simpsons that feature Lisa as a main character. These are scenes or moments during episodes in which she plays a pivotal role or that affect who she is or will become. Oh, let me help you, George Washington. I still want to help you. I want to help you, George Washington. Even your dreams are square. Fair warning, because these moments often have a big impact on Lisa, there are some spoilers ahead. <gasps> What's he doing here? My yearbook. No! Mm -hmm. Number 10. The Simpson Gene Mom, I think something's wrong with me. I can't do anything right lately. Are you just having a bad day? I had one last week. It's no secret that Lisa is one smart cookie. But when she can't solve a puzzle at school, she discovers she also has trouble with easier things. Even playing the sax is impossible. Grandpa tells her that the Simpson gene might be to blame. Homer and Bart were once smart, but by her age, their grades had plummeted. Look at Bart's homework. Back when he was your age, he was smart as a chimp. <gasps> this is just two years ago. That's right. Then the Simpson genes kicked in. Afraid that she'll follow in their footsteps, Lisa appears on TV, pleading with Springfield to cherish their brains. Homer invites extended family over, trying to convince Lisa that the Simpson gene won't affect her future. I beg celebrities for money. Uh, I'm a prison snitch. Jug band manager. My legs hurt. The Simpson men don't prove his point, but the Simpson women are very successful. Lisa is a Simpson through and through, but that doesn't take away from her intellect fortunately for her, and for viewers who find her to be a refreshing role model. I got it! Woohoo! I mean, splendid. Number 9. Lisa and the Real Jebediah Springfield The Secret Confessions of Jebediah Springfield? Know ye who read this, there is more to my life than history records. While researching town founder Jebediah Springfield, Lisa discovers that the man does not measure up to the myth. Far from a wholesome figure, Springfield was actually an evil pirate who attacked George Washington. Give me all your money. Never. <laughs> Only Homer believes her, and they'll do whatever it takes to expose the truth. Springfield allegedly had an artificial silver tongue, but it's nowhere to be found when the town exhumes his body. Well, that settles that. There is no silver tongue. After some sleuthing, Lisa learns that the town historian hid the tongue, wanting to protect himself and Jebediah Springfield's legacy. Lisa wants to share the truth at the town's bicentennial parade, but her realization that they're better off celebrating the myth behind the men and not the other way around shows us another side to her character, namely that she's willing to put others before her desire to be right. Why didn't you tell them? Because the myth of Jebediah has value too. It's brought out the best in everyone in this town. Regardless of who said it, a noble spirit embiggens the smallest man. Number 8. The Lisa Lionheart Doll Millions of girls will grow up thinking that this is the right way to act. That they can never be anything more than vacuous ninnies whose only goal is to look pretty, land a rich husband, and spend all day on the phone with their equally vacuous friends talking about how damn terrific it is to look pretty and have a rich husband! Lisa loves her Malibu Stacy dolls, but something's off with the new one. Upset with her sexist phrases, Lisa tracks down Malibu Stacy's reclusive creator, Stacy Lavelle. Also bothered by the doll, she teams up with Lisa to create Lisa Lionheart. This new doll becomes a big seller after a news show appearance, especially thanks to her empowering catchphrases. Trust in yourself and you can achieve anything. The heads at Malibu Stacy see her as a threat, however, and introduce their own new doll. Well, the only thing new is her hat, but she leaves Lisa Lionheart in the dust. She still embodies all the awful stereotypes she did before. But she's got a new hat. <laughs> Naturally, Lisa's sad that big business trumped her doll's message, but one little girl still takes it to heart. Which means that Lisa is at least able to say that she made a small difference to someone. You know, if we get through to just that one little girl, it'll all be worth it. Yes, 
particularly if that little girl happens to pay four to six thousand dollars for that doll. What? Oh, nothing. Number seven, Lisa and Little Miss Springfield. My name is Lisa Simpson, and I want to be Little Miss Springfield so I can make our town a better place. Yeah, clean up this stinkhole. Lisa is crushed after getting an ugly caricature at the school carnival. Homer enters her in the Little Miss Springfield pageant to boost her self-esteem, selling his prized Duff Blimp ticket to pay the entry fee. With her family rooting for her, Lisa lets loose on stage, killing it in the talent segment. One, two, three, four. To her disappointment, she wins first runner-up, but replaces the winner after Amber gets struck by lightning. Lisa uses her new role to denounce corruption and pageant sponsor Laramie Cigarettes. From now on, I will speak out against the evils in society, from dog napping to cigarettes. She later loses the crown, thanks to Homer, but Lisa isn't too bothered. He wanted her to gain more confidence, and that's exactly what she did. But the point is, you wanted me to feel better about myself. And I do. Really? Uh-huh. Will you remember this the next time I wreck your life? It's a deal. Number six, Lisa and Bart patch up on the ice. <laughs> Great game, Lisa. She may be an overachiever, but if there's one thing Lisa's not good at, it's gym. Her teacher will let her pass, but only if she takes up a sport outside of school. You mean those leagues where parents push their kids into vicious competition to compensate for their own failed dreams of glory? After one of Bart's hockey games, Lisa discovers that she's an amazing goalie. Ever the pushy hockey dad, Homer pits the siblings against each other. I want to see you both fighting for your parents' love! This rivalry comes to a head when Lisa's team plays Bart's team. In the nail-biting match, Bart gets a penalty shot with seconds to spare. Facing each other, the siblings realize they've always had each other's backs and decide to hug it out. <laughs> the game ends in a tie, resulting in a riot, but it's because of the loving brother-sister relationship that we picked this moment. Those kids are like so sweet. If only they had had peewee hockey when I was a lad. Number five, Lisa dates Ralph. Can I walk you home, Valentine? Sure, I guess. Lisa's a good girl, but she often attracts the outcasts. Nelson, Milhouse, and in this case, Ralph Wiggum. He's in a can, go away. Yes, sir. I'd do anything for Lisa. When Ralph doesn't get a card on Valentine's Day, Lisa gives him one out of pity. Ralph wants her to be his girlfriend, but when Lisa tells him she's not ready, he still tries to win her over. I am so glad you Cho Cho chose to come. <laughs> I think you should give that a rest, Ralph. He gets her tickets to Krusty's 29th anniversary show, but Lisa humiliates him on TV. She tries to apologize backstage at their President's Day pageant, but Ralph just wants to play George Washington. And does he ever. But couldn't we just give in to the British? Never! When Lisa and a newly confident Ralph patch things up, it proves that Lisa's not only a good girl, she's also a good friend. I've got something for you. Let's be friends. It says B, and there's a picture of a B on it. <laughs> I thought you'd like it. Number four, Lisa and Mr. Bergstrom. Are you the substitute? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Are you insane? Oh, no, sir. No, no, I'm not. It's, it's my wife getting their attention. Well, all right. Everyone has a teacher that he or she will never forget. For Lisa, that's Mr. Bergstrom, her friendly and funny substitute. Two suggestions are Mr. Nerdstrom and Mr. Booger Strum. <laughs> <laughs> He brings out the best in the class, and Lisa takes a shine to him right away. He quickly becomes her role model, and she wants to spend more time with him. Lisa runs into him at the museum, but is embarrassed by her dad's typical antics. She plans to invite Mr. Bergstrom over for dinner, only to learn that he's off to another school. Lisa catches him boarding the train, and before he leaves, he gives her the most important lesson of all. Whenever you feel like you're alone, and there's nobody you can rely on, this is all you need to know. Thank you, Mr. Bergstrom. He may be a one-time character, but Mr. Bergstrom will always have a special place in Lisa's heart. Goodbye, Lisa, honey. It'll be okay. 
Just read the note. Number three, Lisa's Beach Friends. Like, you know, whatever. Oh. All right. All right. Okay. Smart kids aren't usually the most popular, and Lisa learns this the hard way. Bart gets all the yearbook signatures, but she comes up empty. Now that the Simpsons are on vacation, Lisa sees it as a chance to reinvent herself. Bye-bye, Lisa Simpson. The new Lisa gets a cool group of friends and shares her love and knowledge of nature with them. Bart gets jealous and tries to expose who she really is. He humiliates Lisa by showing the yearbook to her friends. Teacher's pet? <laughs> but just when she thinks she's lost her new friends for good, they show her how much the real Lisa means to them. Not only does Lisa learn the power of friendship, but she also learns the importance of being herself. Meanwhile, her brother learns a lesson too. I showed it to your friends again before we left. Look inside. Oh, thanks, Bart. Number two, Lisa becomes a vegetarian. There's lots of other things I can make. Chicken breast, rump roast, hot dogs. No, I can't. I can't eat any of them. Lisa converts to Buddhism in season 13, but this season seven episode sees her most iconic change. After seeing an adorable lamb at a petting zoo, Lisa stops eating meat. Please, Lisa, I thought you loved me. Loved me. What's wrong, Lisa? Didn't you get enough lamb chops? I can't eat this. I can't eat a poor little lamb. This isn't an easy choice, especially with Homer, Bart, and the school always on her case. Things only get worse when Lisa ruins Homer's barbecue. Feeling more and more pressure to eat meat, she finally bites into a Quickie Mart hot dog. There! Is everybody happy now? Luckily, Apu tells her it was only tofu. And while it's great that she went veggie, she should not force her beliefs on others. Lisa apologizes to Homer and even gets to meet the McCartneys. As it turns out, you can win friends with salad after all. Come on, I'll give you a piggyback ride. Uh, whoops, I mean a veggie back ride home. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I'm amazed the way you love me all the time. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Yes, I will. <gasps> What instrument do you play? The sax. <laughs> Me too. I'm going for first chair this year. Me too. Wow, with so much in common, I'm sure we'll be the best of friends. Me too. Me too. I just want you to know, being smart made me appreciate how amazing you really are. Oh, Dad. Oh, you want a hug? Well, that I know how to do. It, uh. Number one. The Death of Bleeding Gums Murphy. Bleeding Gums Murphy! Little Lisa, it's good to see you again. It's likely that no one has had a bigger influence on Lisa than jazz musician Bleeding Gums Murphy. Their surprise jam session in season one inspires her to express her emotions through music. And Lisa Sachs is one of her most precious belongings. But I can jam with you. Okay. <laughs> This is what makes his sudden death especially hard for her. She's the only person who attends his funeral, and she desperately wants to keep his memory alive. With Bart's help, she buys his rare record and takes it to the local jazz station. As the town enjoys his music, Bleeding Gums appears from a cloud to play with Lisa one last time. Oh, what the heck? Once more from the top. Yay! Their friendship may have been cut short, but through Lisa, his legacy lives on. Do you agree with our list? No! What's your favorite Lisa Simpson storyline? For more brainy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Now on, let me do the smiling for both of us. Okay, Mom. I said you could stop smiling, Lisa. I feel like smiling. <laughs>